Welcome to Super Screen's headline news on the R. There are some stories making rounds at this time. Contrary to claims by Ogun Oshun River Basin Authority, that communities living along the River Ogun in Lagos and Ogun states built on floodplains and are land grabbers. Representatives of these residents have identified the mismanagement of the Onyo Dam as the major cause of flooding in the area. Speaking at a joint press conference organized by representatives of communities living along the River Ogun recently, Chairman Isheri Community Development Association, Abayomi Akinde, provided details into the cause of flooding. I have been told in a very clear terms that the fish are to be protected. They must do everything possible that the fish don't die. Yes, I have been told. Can die. I have been told during one of my telephone conversations when I said, why are you not lowering these gates? From this period, they say if they do it the way I am saying that the fishes are going to die. Uh, okay. And of course, they have economic interest to protest, to protect, because the fishing companies will not fund them if the fishes are dying. So it serves the interest of the fishing communities to keep the water very high. We already said that this dam is also meant to supply fresh water to Lagos and Ogun Water Corporation for processing. Now, that water is not supposed to be free. When Onyo Dam releases water, these water corporations are supposed to pay, or they are meant to pay for it. And Ogwanshu River Basin Development Authority, what it does with the water is to hold these water corporations into ransom. Our lives are being decimated here. Yes. They are reducing us as if, as if we are paupers. Governors in Ogun and Lagos State, I remember once upon a time, along this axis, there were three giant billboards Build your dream home in Riverview. Yes. 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 The government of Ogun invited us to come and buy the property. How come they are branding us Likewise, as, Lagos as, as, as land speculators? Likewise, the Lagos same thing with Lagos. Our governor said we built it on a four flood plane. Flood plane, and they, they, they gave us fear of hope. He also enumerates responsibilities and expectations from Lagos and Ogun State's government on the issue. As we speak now, not one penny of Ogun State government funds that has been committed to Riverview Estate. That's very much I know. The Lagos State government also have a lot of job to do on their part. They stop or they, they, are, they are also not providing infrastructure. Clearly, we need infrastructural development. And of course, these states must work together to open up this environment. It's very critical. Now they are talking about the congested labels. Talking about the congested labels. If this place is properly opened up, you know how many families. Yeah, Isheri North has over 6,000 plots. You know what that could mean. How many families that could accommodate if fully developed? What happens if government bring revenue open up the place, and in fact, it's even a very big potential of generating revenue for them. The Department of State Services, DSS, have dispersed protesters who stormed the service headquarters over continued detention of the convener of the hashtag Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Shouwere. Human rights activist and leader of the protest, Deji Adeonju, who said the group will defy all odds and continue the protest until Shore is free, said it was offered one million naira by an unknown person to suspend the protest at gunpoint. Some of us, when when we said that we are going to come and stand in as shorty, physical shorty for Shore, on Saturday, many Nigerians said, ah, that we, we like to take risk. But true to our words, we came here on Saturday and we actually came to say they should release Shuwere to us because they had by themselves told us that the reason why they are not releasing him to us is because that there was nobody to receive him and collect him. And we came to say, give us our property. 
they refused and played. Some of you were here on Saturday with us. They played all kinds of pranks with us on Saturday here. But be that as it may, we gave a promise that we'll come here today, being the, working, the first working day of the week, and we'll come and tell them that they should release our property and our friend and our brother and our, a fellow comrade to us. They refuse. Since that day, some of us have received all kinds of threats. We are not new to these threats at all. Mm -hmm. But we were even offered money at gunpoint. Gun but in our tradition, I will not go into details to say much. You know, just like when I told you that Charlie Boy compromised the other time, he said it was a lie, and I, and I released evidence to show that he did the compromise against the oppressors. I have told you, and I will say, all the friends and comrades who are here, they know our stand when it comes to the issue of standing for what is right. We will recall that Shawere was granted bail last month for alleged treason and defamation of President Mohamed Buhari's character. He met the bail condition on November 6th, but the DSS has since declined to release him. The Senate has summoned the leadership of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, to give account on its pipeline policies in the country. This comes equal to a point of order raised by Senator Ibikule Amosun and Senator Rocha Sukorocha, who questioned the state of pipeline citation nationwide. And clearly, of course, this leads to several deaths. Mr. President, it is not negligence, let me say that on the part of NNPC. It is active connivance. Because if this is not negligence, this is a deliberate act. They know what to do. Indeed, at that time, we recommended that they should automate this, their pipeline surveillance, which I think they did. So if there's any fault at any place, if they, they can close the valve, they know. Most of the time, you hear about pipeline vandalization, people breaking the pipeline for some sabotage or for some criminal financial benefit. If, if we have to stop this, then NNPC must uh, approach it from the point of business. In other words, let the pipeline issue be contracted out, just like you have trailers and tipper or the trailers conveying products. Let companies now own the pipeline, take care of it. In his resolve, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan tasked the Senate Committee on Downstream to invite the leadership of the NMPC for further briefing before the Senate. Our Committee on Downstream Petroleum uh, Sector should invite the NMPC with a view to evaluating the, the measures or the plans or what they have been doing over the years to, to secure the, the pipelines. We need to know what our contracts there are, what our measures have been placed over the years and whether there is need to, to review uh, those agreements or those arrangements. Uh, of course, the integrity of the pipelines will always be there, but this is a multi-billion dollar industry People consciously uh, uh, do these things. It's not an accident. Those who are caught in, in the fire are normally those who come, for, who come to scavenge in courts because the main people would have finished and gone. Oshun State Assembly has organized the work legislative retreat for government workers in the state. State Governor Boyega Oyetola, who was represented by Secretary to the State Government, Wale Oyebamiji, charged workers to be diligent in their responsibilities. The governor urged the assembly to make people's engagement the basis of legislative activities. There is a need for the assembly to design a roadmap that will guide and drive its vision and programs, complete with institutional and personal performance charter. We must always remember that our performances Better still, our services, our parties, and individuals' testimonials and profiles that will significantly determine our political future and fortune. We need to sanitize our structure and lead by example. We have a task to work and to build a new house of assembly that is respected at home and recognized nationally, both as an example for efficiency productivity and transparency. We need to be educated on some of the modalities for other bill presentation, other motions, 
and things like that. So this uh, particular interaction will enable us to know some of those roles and actions that we ought to take in the course of deliberations within the context of uh, the plenary and the parliamentary sessions. The majority of the members of State of Washington of Assembly are new members. Actually, maybe about 20 out of 26 are new members. So this retreat will, will afford us opportunity to understand uh, the legislative business, how it ought to be done, and how it will bring great benefits to the people of the State of Washington. So it will be of great benefit. And as a matter of fact, it has been, it's long overdue. We ought to have had this you know, some months ago, but it's never too late. The theme of the retreat for this year is enhancing service delivery through effective legislation and engagement. has appealed to the federal government to ban importation of textiles into the country for a period of five years in order to allow production of local textile materials. Senator representing Kaduna Central, Kabero Bakia, during his submission said the industry has witnessed massive decline in two decades, a view corroborated by other senators. Concerned that the textile industry has witnessed massive decline in the last two decades, with many textile companies such as Kaduna Textile, Kano Textile, Aba Textile, United Textile, first diners amongst others closing shops and throwing their workers into the job market. Using the border and doing nothing will not lead us to uh, doing the uh, uh, increased importation, uh, production of uh, uh, textiles. The real problems have been indicated here. The first one, the fact that we are unable to produce the cotton that we need. To, uh, we, use, we need, of course, but far more important, far more important, is the fact of power. Power was the key problem that made most of the textile mills. Close. First and foremost, like the minority whip said, if we address the power sector issue, now without power, you cannot uh, you cannot make any meaningful profit in any manufacturing industry that you open. And so, first, it is for the government, which the government is doing very well, to address the power sector issue. Now, once you do that, most of these industries, especially within the textile uh, uh, industry, we now have easier access to power and so they will be able to make profit because the cost of production would have reduced drastically. On the spot, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, said, without power, no meaningful profit will be realized in the manufacturing industry around the nation. We need really to push for the fixing of the power sector in this country. I agree that we, we should close the border, but I think that is only going to be a temporary relief for us. It's not going to be a permanent way of solving our problems. We, we have to really sit and uh, discuss between the executive and the legislature which ways can we find and fix these issues better and, and faster. Because time is of essence here. Even if we shut, uh, we stop the importation or smuggling in of uh, textile materials produced outside for five years, what happens after five years? The upper chamber also appealed to the federal government to provide infrastructural facilities to local textile manufacturing companies in order to revamp the industry. That's it on Super Screen's headline news on the R. A big thank you for watching. Stay tuned to other interesting programs right here on Super Screen Television.